Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. How would you like to win a Tesla Model S Plaid? We're talking the most amazing production car available today, and it could be yours. Donate $10 and you are entered for the chance to win a Tesla Model S Plaid with a range of 390 miles, top speed of 200 miles an hour, and 0 to 60 acceleration of 1.9 seconds. Look at this beauty. Black interior with wood trim, 17-inch cinematic display, new yoke steering wheel, 21-inch wheels, panoramic glass roof, in-car gaming from any seat, 22-speaker, 960-watt audio system with active noise canceling, HEPA air filtration, and so much more. And you'll be supporting a great cause, Reverb. Reverb partners with musicians, festivals, and venues to green their concerts. Their work makes a real positive impact on the environment, including the elimination of 3 million single-use plastic water bottles at concerts, supporting 2,000 family farmers, elevating the work of 4,000 nonprofits, and eliminating over 180,000 tons of CO2 through their Music Climate Revolution campaign. Yeah, Omez gives away one-of-a-kind prizes while donating money to chosen charities. Their sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and instead focus on serving the needs of their communities. To potentially win this amazing Tesla Model S Plaid and support Reverb and all the incredible work they do, go to amaze.com slash NYK Tesla. All right, so as many of you know, especially if you watch Tesla Time News, this week, the Tesla over-the-air update 2021.32.22 came out, which allows users to apply to be a full self-driving beta user. So basically the button, except that instead of automatically putting you on a list to get the full self-driving beta, Tesla will now first check to make sure you are a safe driver. Yeah, and this makes sense. The first 2,000 beta testers have all kind of been handpicked by Tesla to make sure they are super safe drivers because Tesla does not want any accidents during the testing phase, as this will just cause negative press and could draw the attention of U.S. regulators like the NTSB and NHTSA. So what is Tesla doing? They are implementing Safety Score Beta, whereby your Tesla will monitor how you drive every day and give you a daily score from 1 to 100. So how does this work? As we reported on Tesla Time News, there are five factors that go into calculating your safety score after each drive. There's forward collision warnings per 1,000 miles, there's hard braking, aggressive turning, unsafe follow distance, and forced autopilot disengagements. And now look, all of this is fine and good, but what I think we're all asking right now is how should I drive so that I can get a good safety score and get FSD beta? So Zach and I took our two Model 3s out for drives to see what we could learn. All right, so what are we up to today? We're gonna hopefully be redeeming my safety score. Ooh, well, it's better than the other day. Um, let me just pull mine up though, see what's uh, going on. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so I can't quite read that. Um, that's uh, 98, oh, 98 for me. Right, right, right. So uh, what's the plan today? You're doing what? I'm gonna be driving very relaxed to the Oh, okay. Very... Try and pull that score up. Yes. Uh, so we're going on like what? Like a 20 mile ride there, 20 miles back. So like 40 miles. We're going to really try and pull that up today. Yeah. I'm going to kind of play driving instructor a little bit and see if I can notice where we could improve your score. What do you think? Yeah, I think I know <laughs> what I have to do. <laughs> Let's go. You know, it is funny. Even little turns like this at a stoplight, you kind of have to like make sure you're not going too hard. Yeah. I think I might be switching it into chill. Yeah, I think that's smart. That does bring up another question though, which is even if you get the button, are you then gonna still have to drive well to keep the FSD beta? I don't need it. Like, I, my commute is literally four and a half miles each way, every day. I don't get on the highway, there's no traffic. I don't, I don't need full self-driving. If I really couldn't drive my car the way I wanted to, forget it. Interesting, I mean, I'm willing to drive a little slower to get it and to keep it. Well, isn't the whole point of this to have the worst drivers on the road stop driving and have the car drive themselves? No, at this stage, that's not the point. The point is to make sure that Tesla doesn't get any um, regulators paying too much attention. They don't get a negative press. Uh, this isn't full self-driving full. This is just beta. And so if, it, if the beta starts getting crashes, it's going to draw a lot of negative press. So I'll just wait till it comes out for the bad drivers and then I can, then I'll do whatever I want. That'll, that'll be what I do. I gotta say, this is a different feel than I normally get in the car with you. It's a, a much more like chauffeured, uh, relaxing drive. Uh, I didn't really realize how much, 
Umfier you normally drive. I mean, fun. <laughs> All right, so we're approaching our on-ramp, and uh, this is where you could get into some trouble with tight turns, right? Right, so I have to slow way down. So yeah, so it's 0.4 Gs for steering, um, and like here normally I'd be going really fast, but yeah, you're slowing Because I, I am down. getting on a highway, you know, and normally I wouldn't be driving the on-ramp speed limit of whatever it is, 25. You know, I would be speeding up. Here, it's like, I'm, it's tough. I want to be speeding up a lot. So now here's one of the tips I would give, which is if you drive nice and slow on the back roads to get to the highway, and you think your score must be pretty high, I would then put it into autopilot, because then you're just racking up miles, and you can't really lose unless one thing goes wrong, which would be that it bumps you out of autopilot. Except that there was a tweet which said that there was a forward collision warning while they were in autopilot, and they were still dinged which means that there's definitely at least two things that could go wrong. And I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, heavy braking and the other things were counted as well. I, I just, I have to be as safe as I possibly can if I really want to get my score up. Yeah, but listen to your father here. I've got a 98 and I think I did it right. I've, we've been driving autopilot on the highways and I think that that's a great way to just rack up the miles. It could be, it's just, well, I mean, for where we're driving now, there's just not a lot of cars on the road, so I will agree, yes, that's probably fine. And it'll give me a chance to look further down the road and make sure that I have a nice smooth ride, you know, maybe do some lane changes in order to, uh, you know, avoid, you know, people stopped on the side of the road and stuff like that. Wait, so you're giving in, you're going to autopilot? I mean, yeah, the conditions are, I mean, the weather conditions aren't great, but the, there's no one on the road, so that's kind of nice. I will set my follow distance to maximum because I don't want my score to be impacted if I'm following too closely. Yeah, let's remind everybody, according to what Tesla printed, you want to be more than 1.1 seconds behind a car and it only starts counting when you're within 1.1 to 3 seconds behind a car. And it makes a ratio between being too close, which would be 1 second or less, and then if you're three seconds or more, it's not even gonna count it. So like a perfect situation, I guess, would be around three seconds behind a car. Let's look at this Jeep in front of us. I'm gonna time how far in front of us he is, roughly. About four seconds, I think. Yeah, and that feels really super safe. Like I wouldn't need to be any further behind than that. Okay. All right, so we have some pretty crappy conditions out there, and um, as you can see, and you just got a forward collision warning, and you're in a bad mood. I'm sorry, dude. It wasn't your fault, actually. It was just like everyone was getting over from the right lane because it was flooded. You think that's going to ding your score a lot? Yeah. I hate this. This is the worst. Like, I just get cut off. Like, does that ding my score? No way of, of you know, dealing with that in any other circumstance at all. So, yeah, I just, I guess I have to just live in you know, whatever it is, Boise, Idaho. It, it makes like bad conditions even worse because yeah, I would probably be in a bad mood driving in this, these conditions anyway, just to add on top of that, that I have to be like extra, not even like safe driving. I'm not even driving safely. I'm driving like fake safely. I'm driving like, well, I'm slowing down slowly. It doesn't do anything. It's just, I, I hate false criteria. And this is how exactly this feels. This feels like I'm being judged on the wrong metrics here. It infuriates me so much more than if I were just driving normally. Because now I have to worry that every single little thing that I do is being like, Oh, I slowed down. Why did you do that? It's because they're people freaking driving like insane people on the highway. You know, something that just occurred to me is that maybe this is by design, this little safety uh, game they're playing here which is if you're willing to play along in the game and you're willing to you know play the game then that's the kind of person they're looking for that's the kind of beta tester person they're what they they want to be part of this and if you're not willing to play the game well then maybe they don't want you I mean maybe you're not a perfect person to be on the beta program it's not about being a perfect person I think it has a lot to do with your means your time I mean because if I had all the time in the world yeah, I would just, I guess I would just go up to New Hampshire where there are no, there was nobody on the road and I would just go back and forth and back and forth and, and I could totally juice my score that way. But I don't think that it's that productive, especially if you're, you know, trying to test a beta version of a software. I know that there's this huge 
pressure about press. I just think that the public is so misinformed anyway that anytime there's a crash and an autopilot is suspected, that I think is just as damaging as if a car in full self-driving were to get into a little fender bender because let's face it, that's probably what they're going to do. I think that they're really worried about NHTSA and the NTSB. I think they're worried that if one of these betas gets into a bad crash, that uh, NHTSA will shut them down. These agencies, these regulatory agencies, don't really seem to know much about the technology anyway, and it seems like they're being politicized. I mean, we saw those senators who were basically just saying, hey, we want you to investigate. I mean, it's not data-driven. It's not scientific. These cars are safer than other cars. Tesla should be given, you know, congratulations for saving people's lives, which statistically they already have done, and yet that's not what's happening on Capitol Hill. Now, I can understand that basically, you know, driving an autopilot is different than driving, uh, you know, full self-driving on city streets. That, Like, you know, I get on the highway and I put it into autopilot, suddenly I'm a better driver because I can be paying attention to different things. But then if we're talking about full self-driving, I'm gonna have to be really paying attention to making sure that my car doesn't slam into anything. So I don't know how the regulators would even really think about it. It, it's, it is complicated, and I do get what Tesla's trying to do. It's just so infuriating. I, I don't like being lied to. This is why I don't like, you know, ICE car companies, because they are just a bunch of liars. Um, so I don't I, know, I have a different take than you. I don't feel like I'm being lied to. I feel like Tesla's in a tough spot. They need to find very safe drivers to allow to expand the program, and they had to come up with some kind of criteria. There's no perfect way to do it, and I've already said, like, I would have done it differently, but, like, this is a way to do it, and it is have, it has some scientific weight to it. It's not realistic. You're not being realistic if, if you're, you know, dinging people for hard turns or for um, hard braking. It, it just, it, th those aren't the right criteria. I think that there are better criteria and to put it all together. I mean, yes. It does feel a bit rushed. I will grant you that. It seems like the people who put this together was probably a small part of the team, and they just, you know, put together some quick criteria and right. it could have been better thought through I agree and maybe it will be down the road they're going through this difficult period that we've talked about so often where they have to go from level two to level five and they have to do it as fast as humanly possible and or as fast as computerly possible and that's kind of the hell that they're in right now I think I kind of see a point that you're just making here which is the car is going to be driving in itself right with the safety driver in, in your seat and the safety driver's job at that point won't be driving anymore it will be attentiveness and taking over and right now the beta safety system scoring factor system is not actually doing that very well I think it should be using the camera and it should be seeing how attentive you are as a driver versus how good you are as a driver right now for the frontal collision avoidance system I can get that that means that maybe I wasn't paying as much attention when I get that thing but I think that hard braking, hard turning, those two things are pretty important that you're going to want safety testers to have. You do not want some kind of really chilled out dude to be driving, you know, a car which he might need to take over and, and wrench the steering wheel and really rip it to get out of harm's way if you really don't want an accident. No, it's a really good point because right now it's going to give a, you know, grandfatherly driver a higher score than a race car driver. Right. And you really do want a race car driver as the perfect driver. This kind of feels like college to me where uh, the first few weeks of class I'm not getting some subject and I do poorly on a couple of quizzes and then it's demoralized me because now I'm like uh, I'm getting you know 50 average and the big test is coming up and now instead of going into it like with positivity and like I love this class I'm going into it as oh my god I better do well on this test and to me that's not how I like to learn and not how I like to do things but that's kind of I think what you're driving at with uh, the safety score beta is like it's making you feel like if you started off poorly, which many of us did because we didn't know what the score was, um, now we're just trying to catch up. Well, and the fact that I had to go way out of my way to get the updated Tesla app on my phone. That's not cool. That's basically like your professor not grading the tests for half the semester, and then you get your first quiz back, and you're like, oh no, I failed it, what? I thought I was doing great this whole semester. Professor, why didn't you grade the tests earlier? Why couldn't I see my score earlier? Um, and I'm, I'm telling you, most Android users 
right now do not have the updated app, which means that they do not know what their safety score is. Are they doing a test? Are they trying to do an A-B comparison? Because well, that's not even how you would do it scientifically. And I think that points to the fact that this was rushed. Right. Because, I mean, why would you have not gotten the Android app ready? Right. Like, look like, at this guy. Like, right now. Do you know what I would be doing right now? I would be either slamming on my brakes or accelerating to high heaven because this guy almost ran into my lane. What am I doing now? Oh, I'm just sitting here like a freaking idiot just waiting to get run over. Why? Because I don't want to slam on my brakes. Is that safe? Am I a safer driver? No, I should be getting the heck away from that thing regardless of whether it's changing in my lane or not. So here's an example of where a lot of people are going to have trouble. We're coming off a highway, off an off-ramp. And turn the camera around. Guess who that is? Turn that around. See, look. Oh, hello. Giant pickup truck on my ass. Thanks. Yep, I am slowing down to 40 miles an hour before I even get to the turn. And this is probably too much of a turn. Is that safe? Should I be upsetting a giant pickup truck behind me? Yeah, and that just adds a lot of stress because it's not fun having trucks up on your butt. And, I mean, that's not safe. It's only been about 24 hours for me with the safety score button because we just figured out the other day how to get the app and we did that thanks to you guys on our Patreon Slack. We're gonna give a link down below on how you can get that information as well. But what's occurred to me is that this was a rush job. This was, we didn't even come up with the app update for Android and we just had to come up with this formula thing and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense how they implemented it and it's you're right it's not going to lead to safer driving and in fact i don't think the safety score is going to lead to drivers who are actually going to help the beta program more look i just want to make an argument here we've got some age differences between us but i think in this case you want younger drivers i mean i know that my reaction times are slower than jesse's i know that because we've driven a lot of things together um you know race kind of situations and you're better at it and and that's because well you've trained on it more but you're also younger and your reaction times are better and i think for grabbing the car when something dangerous is gonna happen. I think a 20 something is better than a 50 something in many cases. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time like in a simulator. Like I, I have a, a steering wheel that connected to my computer. So I play a lot of racing games and they're very realistic racing games. It's not just the arcade racing game where you, you know, get boosts and stuff. It's truly as close to life as they can get. So has that made me a better driver? More than anything else in the entire world. I also just think though that they could factor in accidents. They have your driving record. Right. So why not just say, hey, Zach and Jesse have both not been in accidents for over 10 years. Right. That's a really good start. And if someone's got like three accidents in the right. past year, that's not a good sign. This is why I don't think that they're looking at just the safety score. I think that they are gonna be judging it based on mileage. I think the more mileage you put in, the the higher they're gonna weight you. I mean, I have a nine mile commute uh, back and forth to work every day. So I only get nine miles a day. That doesn't really help them. They do want someone who has apparently all the time in the world to devote to this kind of thing. All right, so now it's my turn. Uh, we're gonna go for a ride, see if I can maintain my very near perfect driving safety score. Mm -hmm. So this is the way I've been thinking while I'm driving to maintain this safety score. I kind of pretend that there's like a basket of eggs in the back seat that's not buckled in. Uh -huh. And I kind of think like, I've got to get the eggs safely home. Um, and that's helped me a lot as I'm driving to just really be extra careful with like all of my aggressive turning and all of my aggressive braking. It's just like, don't let the basket of eggs fall off the seat. Right. You know, even something as simple as pulling out of like a driveway or, you know, out of a restaurant parking lot, normally it's just like a no brainer. You don't even think about it. You just pull out. But I've been having to give serious thought to my basket of eggs because it's easy to like more aggressively turn than you think. And I think that's where a lot of people are probably going to lose some points is on little things like that. They don't, that they don't even think about because 0.4 G's of turn is probably not that much. And I think that's one of the problems is none of us know where that cutoff is, what that feel is. All right, and uh, here's Mr. Porsche behind us flashing his high beams because he doesn't like that we're going too slow. Oh, yeah, I'd love to be going faster too, bud. 
All right, so it's been working out pretty well on the highway. It's middle of the day, it's pretty light traffic, um, but it does feel really weird to be going so slow. For instance, we're coming up on a merge here. I don't know if you wanna film this, Jesse. And normally I would get over one lane because I don't wanna be a part of the merge, but I'm so afraid of jerking the wheel and making it too tight a turn that I'm not gonna do that, which means that I'm kind of being more unsafe than I normally would be. Um, that one worked out fine, so that was okay. But you know, a lot of merges don't work out that great, and so that's where it's making me drive differently than I'm used to, and it really shouldn't be doing that. It should be making me just more alert, and it's not. All right, so we're gaming the system right now. We're in a parking lot going pretty slowly, and we're just doing very slow turns, and we're not gonna have to brake much, and there's no cars here. So I think according to Tesla, we're just gonna gain miles doing really safe driving, which is not what Tesla intended. They did not want you to be driving around a parking lot um, and gaming the system, but because they've given us the rules, it's kind of like when, uh, you know, you study for like the SATs and you learn all sorts of things that like are kind of gaming that system. Are they going to know that all these cars drove around the parking lot and like give us minus points for that? Or are we just gaining points for it? So the part about this that I really wish uh, I understood better was the deacceleration at 0.3 G's and the side to side hard turning at 0.4 G's. I just don't know what that means. And so, I mean, I know it explained it as how many, like 6.7 miles per hour braking in one second. I mean, so I guess I could try and figure that out. But like, I just don't know this turn I'm making now, like is this 0.2 G's, is it 0.1 G's? I wish there was like an indicator so that I could learn like, oh, that's the kind of turning they don't want me to do because otherwise I'm probably doing it way more slowly than I have to, which is making this whole process a lot less fun because like Jesse's been saying, if it's not fun to drive, then I don't want to drive. <laughs> um, like this turn right here, like I probably went way too slow on that turn, but I'm just being super cautious because I want to keep my score up. And then the same thing coming up to this red light, like I'm going to start braking, but I'm probably going to start braking like right about now, really gently like that's kind of ridiculous because I probably am overdoing it but I've just I don't know and if it had something on the screen that would kind of tell me like a warning or whatever like to teach me that would be good all right so I'm kind of forced to drive in the right lane because I'm trying to be you know slow uh, which means that there's a lot of on-ramp activity and I had to kind of uh, nudge my brakes to let some guy in on me and I'm worried that that little split second of braking was heartbreaking even though it was for only a split second because I just don't know I mean does that count do they are they counting some minimal amount of time and it's just like so now I'm having to think about braking which means that I'm not being safe like they've actually gotten into my head and that's the part where I'm like I don't know if they've thought through this because now I'm second guessing all of my maneuvers and not in a good way all right here's another example of something that just happened I was gonna put it into autopilot because I'm like, let let just get me home on autopilot, rack up some good miles. But I did, and it kind of jerked me over a little bit into like an exit lane. And now I'm worried that it like counted against me. So now I don't want to throw it to autopilot anymore, which means I'm again affecting how I would drive the car, and in not in a good way. I would. Can you drive any slower? I would never take this exit that slow, but. I'm just so worried about, I made sure there's no one behind me, I know. but like I just didn't, I was afraid the turn was too tight. I know. I'm just afraid we're gonna get rear-ended. No, I keep checking, I know. Yeah. That's what I mean, it, it, you're right, it is affecting our driving, probably not for the better. Like, I'm, I'm more worried about getting an accident. I know. Now, just cause it's like, we're doing some crazy, like, grandmotherly stuff. Oh my God. Like even now, like I normally would go and like I'm gonna go, but like I'm going right, slow. Right, slow. Like, so I could get T-boned more. All the things that if I saw someone doing that on the road, I'd be like, okay, you, yeah. what are you doing? No, I don't feel like a safe driver now. I no. feel like a very timid driver. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but like maybe in different parts of the country you can be that way, but yeah. in New England, if you're a timid driver, it makes the other drivers around you like want to kill you. Yeah. They want to kill you. And well, and they that means that they react differently, which means right. and it's not safe. They'll so, always make it harder for you to drive if yeah. you do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other thing I just want to ask about is potholes. And now I'm really worried every time I hit a pothole because I feel like that's going to count as like hard braking or hard turning because the car just did this jumbly thing. And I'm like, is that true? Maybe it is. I have no way of knowing. Okay, so first of all, you need the app. 
And you might be saying, well, oh, I have the Tesla app. But if you have an Android phone, there's a good chance that you don't have the safety score beta or at least hadn't had it uh, up until later point in this week. Right. Um, and if you don't have the app, then you're kind of driving in the dark. And as we talked about on Tesla Time News, if you have that Android phone, uh, then as of this recording, you still won't have access to Safety Score Beta unless you download it separately, as we show you how to do in our Patreon bonus stories this week. And if you don't know, you can help support this channel and get to watch all of our Patreon bonus stories by going to patreon.com slash now you know and supporting us for as little as a buck a month. I highly recommend getting your app updated before requesting the button. Well, in here's why. So I got a software update, you know, in the middle of the night. And, you know, so I get a little, and oh, wow, I can get the, oh, great. So I download the thing. And then in the morning I go out to my car. It says requestful self-driving. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, it'll, it'll judge my driving. Sure. Whatever. I did not know about any of the different things that they were going to do. And then I kept looking at my app and looking on my screen and going through all the menus, trying to find where there, I heard there was some progress bar. I heard there was something that would tell me what my score was. I couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Then Zach and I sit down to do Tesla Time News, which means that we're going to do hours of research anyway. We did hours of research on this thing, and I realized I, A, don't have the app, which will tell me my safety score, which seemed kind of odd. And then B... I don't know if the way that I was driving was the way that I should have been driving. So you drove a whole day without knowing and you drove normal and it was on my day off. So I had, you know, plenty of time to run a bunch of different errands. And unfortunately, I was, you know, getting on and off the highway uh, in a bunch of places that I normally don't really like to drive. But I was running errands. Uh, so then I finally figure out how to get uh, the proper version of the app on my phone. And I had like a 59. And it was like a real slap in the face because it was like, well, how was I supposed to have known? I, I could have known that day that I was doing it wrong if only I had the app. But here's an important point, I think, for me, which is you're a safe driver. You have not been in an accident in over 10 years. I've never been in an accident. You've never, right. You've never been in an accident. Yes. Uh, you're a safe driver. Um, and yet that was your safety score for an average day of you driving. 59. Right. Which doesn't sound very average. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. Like in terms of. Well, numbers. I, I know that it was it was a stressful day driving. I, I noticed myself that it was like, well, were you trying to drive extra safe? I started off that way. Um, but then, I mean, it was a Saturday. Everyone was driving like, I don't know that they were late, but also wanted to be vindictive jerks. Um, so, I mean, I, a person uh, brake checked me. It so obviously like I had a bunch of like hard braking, um, a lot of st I'm just swerving out of dumb people on the road who you know pull out halfway through the road, and you're just like, what are you doing? And I wasn't thinking like, oh my safety score. I just thought, yeah, Tesla's going to make sure that I don't hit anything. Right. And you didn't really know what the parameters were yet for your safety. You didn't know the five factors. No. Right. So. That's kind of what we're talking about here is if you just go driving like you normally do, you could be in Jesse's boat where you basically have a fairly low score and now you're playing catch up. And as we all know, like from school, playing catch up is not fun. So now you're just trying to catch up and it's making every ride just more stressful. So if you do have the app finally and you're kind of afraid to go out and actually turn on the beta yet, uh, is there anything people can do to like simulate this so there is the safety score simulation um now what's that that allows you to enter in numbers and it will spit out the safety score for a particular drive all right that sounds really confusing can you just actually like walk me through this sure all right so there's my fantastic driving score so yeah. far and if you scroll down here to daily details and then you scroll down here you can go to safety score simulator and once it loads this allows you so this took your your daily score and gave you a score based on how you were driving so interestingly even though you're doing unsafe following for 15.7 percent of the time which i don't think you were doing because we no. just we just did that test apparently you did and apparently this is the score that'll give you 100 so he didn't care that you were unsafe following for 15.7% uh, of the time. But you can change these numbers around. So the, the the tricky part about this, though, is, okay, so forward collision warnings per, I don't know, 10 every 1,000 miles. That would ding it by three points from where you were before. Oh, okay. Um, but then if you were to change it to, say, 20. Wait, 20 forward collision warnings? No, that would be... Oh, per 1,000 1, miles. miles. So you'd have to, yeah. Well, so let's say we went for a 20-mile drive. 
Mm -hmm. and I got one forward collision warning. Oh yeah, you don't want to do that. Well, show me what that would do. Well, so then you have to do a little bit of math there. So that would be a uh, thousand miles divided by a 20 mile drive. So that would be 50 forward collision warnings. Per 1,000 Per 1,000 miles. So put that in. Uh -oh. okay. So it shows that that's very bad, brings you down to an 83. Oh, but still not killer. I mean, it's gonna happen to us occasionally on a, on a drive. Sure. In fact, it happened to you on, on our drive. Sure, but I mean, it, it, but it's just good to know, like now you know, like. Hey, that's the name of the show. Yeah, it really hurts your score. Sure. Uh, and I mean, so yeah, that, that kind of gives you your, uh, tells you how you're doing it. Now, if you don't have the app, this simulation won't happen. And I also think that if you haven't updated your, uh, I think if you haven't pressed the button, I don't know if you get access to this simulator. Okay, so I think one cool way to use the simulator though, is what we just did, the uh, forward collision warning thing, but also like, I was driving really slow, probably way slower than I needed to. And I can't keep doing that. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't do that for the next month. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to start driving faster, taking turns faster, braking faster. But I can keep looking at my score each day and being like, okay, I drove a little faster today. And my this is what happened, let's say, with my braking. I can use the simulator to go in and say like, all right, let me just be five times more braking than I did and find out how much that dings me. Mm -hmm. And that way I can make a decision on how I drive. Yeah, I mean, I think that there needs to be a little bit more information on how the beta is gonna go, just so that way people can kind of plan their lives. Cause the, you know, it would be one thing if it was like, oh, if you're a good driver, then you're probably gonna do well on this thing. No, that's not the case. No, I mean, I thought this would be kind of fun, right? A kind of like a game, but I've quickly realized, and this is only over the course of basically 48 hours or so, mm -hmm. That this uh, is not that fun. And it's because basically I can't turn it off. I mean, most games you can be like, I'm done playing now. But for this, uh, if I'm going on a commute, I can't be like, yeah, just shut off the game because it's going to keep monitoring. Right. Um, and that's the big problem here. Now, maybe this is Tesla's way to dissuade me from being a beta user, which is valid. But I would warn you that you should really consider whether you want to be part of this beta program, because I'm sure most of us can get through a week of driving like this, like a slow poke. But if we get booted for a low safety score at any time, then that means that we got ourselves on the program. Then we decided to start driving normal again. And then one day they could be like, oh, you're not safe. You're booted. Well, or you could have just been driving as safely as you could and someone decided to be a jerk to you on the highway. Right. I mean, you'd have to keep driving like a slowpoke for basically months and months to come. So here's what Jesse and I are going to do. I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to do my darndest to keep my stellar safety score and join the beta program with my Model 3 as soon as they'll let me on. Jesse is going to become a guinea pig to help understand how the safety score beta works. Yeah, I mean, as much as I really would love to get the beta, this is so stressful. It is it is the biggest cause of stress for me this week has been this beta program thing. Normally, I love driving my car. I can't wait to get in it. I can't wait to go driving. Now I loathe it. It's it's, it's you know, back to when I had a gas car and I was just worried that something was going to fall off of my car. Um, I now just do not want to get in the driver's seat. I don't want to go anywhere um, because I'm just worried about my score. It's just, it's eating me up. It's killing me. Um, and that's really not why I bought this car. It's not why I spent thousands of dollars on full self-driving. I just thought I was going to get full self-driving. Um, I realize right now that it's beta, but uh, just, wow, was this unpleasant. Now, this is a big deal, this beta safety program, because even after the FSD beta program is over and real FSD arrives, Tesla is going to be using a system like this to determine safety scores for any driver that wants to be on Tesla insurance. And if Tesla insurance uses the safety system beta or something like it that exists as it does today, then I think there's going to be a big problem. If I had to drive my car to, to get a good insurance rate, if I had to drive my car like I do today um, with this with this, uh, you know, safety score beta system, uh, forget it. I, I, I honestly I'd go back to driving my leaf. I'd go buy a bolt. I wouldn't I wouldn't care because I can't use the capability of my car. Right. I mean, I like this in theory. I like that we're supposed to be safer drivers. I think they got a couple things really wrong. The turning. There are times when you're driving a car that you have to turn hard. Now, I know that Tesla doesn't immediately make you a bad driver if you do one hard turn, but you're constantly thinking about it. And that means that I'm actually doing this calculation in my head as I'm driving. Oh, I need to turn fast, but wait, that could ding me. 
And that is not should not be in my head. I should be turning fast if I need to. And the same thing with braking. I, yeah. So many times today I was like, oh no, something bad's happening. Well, I guess I'm just going to coast right into it. <laughs> right. Some, some emergencies happening in front of me that which I, you know, have plenty of room for right. since I've been driving like a grandmother. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to be looking down at my speed indicator and trying to determine how many seconds have gone by. And if I've gone down by six miles an hour during that. I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, That's th not safe. This is the unintended consequences, I think, of when you set up some kind of test. I mean, it's been happening to humans all throughout history, right? We set up like SATs and then you teach to the test and kids who have money can go have special tutors and then they get a high SAT mm -hmm. score. It doesn't mean they're better people, but now you have a high SAT score. The same thing is happening here. I feel like Tesla should be smarter about this. I feel like there's four things we talked about that they should be using. One is the cabin camera. Pay attention to where my eyes are. That's what you really want to know. You want to know if I'm paying attention to the car in the road. You you want to know if I'm texting, if I'm playing with the screen too much, if I'm eating, if right? I'm, if I'm turning right. in, in, you know, talking to people in the back seat. That's super important information, and I bet a lot of drivers out there are doing that or falling asleep. Second thing is when AP gives me a warning to you know keep my hands on the wheel. I think drivers who are keeping their hands on the wheel is a very important thing, but yet this safety beta is not doing anything with that really, other than if it knocks you off. Right. Third thing is acceleration. I mean, I think we should still be allowed to accelerate our cars, but maybe excessive acceleration. Maybe if you pass some threshold, which I don't know what it is, but like someone who's just driving crazy, that should be dinged, I think. Well, again, everything comes down to context. Right. If I'm accelerating really fast on the highway, wow, geez, Jesse got up to 90 miles an hour. What the hell's going on with that? Uh, oh, yeah. Guess what? There was a semi truck coming into my lane. That's why I did it. Well, and that comes to my fourth thing that they should be using is speed. But again, it should be relative to something. So like if you're uh, taking your whole commute at 110 miles an hour, you should get dinged for that. There are plenty of people who I see doing that. But if you're passing a truck for a moment at 90 miles an hour to because it's dangerous, I don't think you should be dinged for that. Now, I know that that's complicated and maybe that formula can't be devised right now. But if you're going to be aiming for Tesla insurance, then I think you're going to have to be thinking of all these things because you're going to be forcing us to drive in an unsafe way if you keep using this metric. And, you know, if I could drive normally and I could get Tesla insurance and it was 10, 20 percent cheaper than any other insurance provider that I could get, that'd be great. But if I have to drive the way that I've been driving uh, for the past couple of days uh, just to be able to get this special insurance, forget it. Forget it. Right. I, I won't do that because it's like not having my car anymore. It's right. like someone stole my car, gave me a golf cart and said, here you go, Jesse. Here's a golf cart that you could go fast run, but it would it would uh, cost you money or it would be some you'd be stressed out about it. Right. I freaking hate this. Yeah. So comment below things that you'd like Jesse to test because he's going to be our guinea pig. He's not going to pay attention to the rules and we'll get to see what happens when he does those things. Tell us your thoughts on how the safety score beta is working for you in the comments below. Now, we've also set up a simple, easy to fill out Google form so that we can find out what the average score is, because I think we all kind of want to know, just like when we're back in school, and we'll be reporting on that on next week's Tesla Time News. We'll put the link for that form down below. It'll be the forms.gle link. Um, be sure to click on it. Be sure to enter in your thing. Don't cheat. You know what? This is all just data. Um, we're not collecting names or anything. We're not going to make fun of you. So, yeah, whatever your score is, we'd love to know it. Um, and if you don't know what your score is because you don't have the app, um, why don't you head over to Patreon and help support us and we'll tell you how to do it. I'm sure you could figure out it by yourself if you really uh, I couldn't it, it was, was very it was 13 <laughs> very complicated it steps was very involved yeah um, but it did work and I'm so glad I did it because now after each ride um, I can actually see like how I did and it was way better than being in the dark like it was for the first day yeah um, not that it's made me feel any better necessarily <laughs> right because it's stressful as hell yeah so again we're going to do our best to get on that program because of course we want to show you what FSD beta looks like because I mean that is the future and I guess that's my final point here is I want to be part of history. And that's the whole reason why I think you and I both wanted to do this program is this is going to be like a dividing line in the history books or in the history websites. It's going to talk about this dividing line between when people drove cars and when humans stopped driving cars. And we're in that moment in history now. And I want to be a part of that. But this way of doing it, uh, yeah, has kind of made it really stressful for me because like you were saying, I don't really want to be driving my Tesla much anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had days where I've put 500 miles on my Tesla. Now I barely want to even drive to work. I'd rather just take an e-bike. It's so stressful. And just the last thing I want to ask is, and maybe you guys can put your comments below. Um, 
how many miles a day should I be driving? Because I do want to get the beta, but I don't want to go for like 500 mile drives, you know, because I there's some like a magic number of miles I have right. to have. I imagine that you've pointed this out. You think that Tesla probably has some magic number of miles that they want people to drive. Like they probably don't want people that just have a two mile commute. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I don't want to just like be driving all day to get this. So like, what do you, what do you think is the number? Well, that's the thing that really also bugs me. It's like, I know that they can't just be using the safety score. They must have other criteria, but they aren't telling us what those criteria are, which is great in the sense that now I can't, you know, uh, fudge it. So that way I get the thing when I might not be the driver that they're looking for. But I just feel like I'm not being judged fairly if I'm going to like go through all this work to try and like drive like a grandmother um, just so I can get this beta when they're not never going to give it to me because I live in New England. I feel like what they actually want is something they don't know that they want. They actually want a race car driver, but they think they want a grandmother. And your point was. Most of the time on FSD beta, the car is going to be driving itself. Occasionally, it will get into trouble and need you to take over. And when that moment comes, you're going to have to take over really fast because we've watched a lot of these videos where you're driving along and it's doing OK with some cones. And then all of a sudden it just decides to veer into another lane and you have to like oh, wrench it back. Right. Which is aggressive steering. So uh, having people that don't know how to do aggressive steering with their cars, which may or may not be true, because obviously I know what I'm doing, but I'm. Uh, just for the test. But, you know, if you select a bunch of people who've never whipped their car around before, they might not be able to do it when full self-driving is pointing them straight at a wall. Right. And that's kind of when you want them to be able to recover really fast and know things about driving and know if like, oh, I might lose grip here. Like these kinds of things uh aren't just like, well, I'll go very slowly and I'll turn I mean, very not sharply. If I was Tesla, I would actually ask people to put their cars in autopilot, drive them a lot, and give me points when I take the car out of autopilot because it was about to do something stupid. Right. That would say like, oh, wow, for 400 miles, he was paying attention, waiting for that moment that we needed him, and he was there as a driver. Right. It's kind of what they're going to need. And again, it, I might need to do some uh, ex you know, hard braking and some hard turning because... That's the only safe way to drive sometimes. Yeah. So the safety score system is not really looking for attentive drivers at the moment. I don't think it's just looking for people who can turn slowly and brake slowly. And I just, yeah, I don't it's think weird. It is weird. Uh, it's like it's almost like the team that was putting this together is looking for the wrong thing. They were looking for people to get into the least amount of accidents, but that's not actually what they're looking for for this beta program. Right. It's sort of this like correlation isn't causation like, oh, uh, you know, 85% of prisoners like uh, mashed potatoes. So anyone who likes mashed potatoes is probably a criminal. Right. It's like, that's not how that works. Right. And so, oh, people who don't get into accidents generally don't drive, you know, oh, they don't brake aggressively and they don't turn aggressively. Well, maybe it's just because they're grandmothers and they only have to drive a mile or two to, right. to the grocery store and then they drive a mile home and everyone is just so mad at them behind them. It's just that they weren't driving for long enough for the, them to get driven off the road. Right. Anyway, love to know your comments on this one. So please comment below about what you think about Tesla's safety beta program. Thanks so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.